One of the most common toolpaths, and so one of the most important toolpaths that ArcGAM Insignia is used to create, is a simple cutout pass of shapes or letters. It's essential that you have good control over this type of toolpath because it's going to affect the part edge to reduce hand finishing and also make sure you can hold the part in place on your machine if you're using a vacuum hold down or some other hold down system. We're going to take a few minutes to look at the options of control we have within ArcChem Insignia to show you some of these within the program. First of all, we'll select it and go into the toolpath and create a simple cutout pass using a 6mm tool. If we look in the 3D, we can see it's taken two steps to do this cut because of the depth of cut we've got specified, the type of material we're using, and we can simulate that in order to see how that's going to look and you can see that ArcCam automatically cuts the inside first and then the outside and it does that with any shapes where you have one inside the other completely automatically. So that would be a simple cutout pass on this shape. What are the problems with this pass at the moment? One of the problems I've got is the fact that I'm plunging right next to the part edge. This is bad in a number of ways. The first is as I plunge downwards my tool is very likely to vibrate and mark the edge of the part being right on it. The second is that as I'm plunging vertically I'm causing a lot of stress on my tool because it doesn't like to cut downwards and that in turn is going to cause more vibration and potentially damage to the machine over the long run. Other problems I've got is I'm taking multiple passes so it has the potential to leave a mark at each level that it cuts around the job, again due to the vibration of the tool, so it would be better if I could eliminate that as well. In addition to that, I have no way of holding this part in place, maybe other than my vacuum or some mask, and if that's not strong enough, it's going to move apart, so I have no way of holding it in place either. So let's look at some ways we can actually address these issues. First of all, if we go back into the tooling, one thing that I can do is lead into the job, instead of plunging vertically down next to it. So if we take this and add a lead to it, just make sure it's uh, in the same place, we can see that that's going to plunge off the job, lead in and then go around and come off, so reducing the potential for a mark here, but it's still making a 90 degrees turn there. So what could be even better is to use circular leads, which will allow me to arc in, go around and arc off again, making sure that as I hit the job and leave the job I'm going in the direction of cut which is again going to reduce the chance of making a mark here. Even more chance of reducing that mark is to take an overcut distance which means it's going to come past its original entry point in order to give me the lead out. And so you can see there's a lot of options for how I want to lead in and out there. Now one of the downsides of this is I'm still plunging vertically downwards if we look in the 2D view, we can see that, in the 3D view, sorry. So we're plunging vertically down, which is still putting a lot of stress on my tool. What I may want to do is actually add ramping moves in order to reduce this stress, so some of the downwards cut that's in the material is done with a ramp on it. So again, if we recalculate, you can see that now what I've got is a plunge down, and then I'm going to ramp into here and ramp down, and that's going to ensure that the tool is cutting sideways as well as vertically. So drastically reducing the stress on my tool and my machine, extending my tool life and really saving me a lot of money. Also much less chance of marking the part again in this way. Taking those options off now, let's look at a couple of other things we can do with a tool pass. As I mentioned earlier, when taking multiple passes like this, there's a good chance of leaving a mark with this first tool path as it goes around the part. So it would actually be much better if I could cut through with multiple passes where only the very last pass is going to be against the edge. And I can do this with the final pass allowance. If we put in a millimetre there, what's going to happen is, if we look down the z-axis we can see that the first pass is off the part by a mill and the last pass will be a millimetre closer it's got much less material to cut because it's already cut most of it away and so I should be able to get a nice clean cut around there with a single depth cut. Now if I find that that's too much material still for the second pass to take then I can add an extra pass at the bottom again by specifying a value and what ArcChem is now going to do is take that and do three passes, two away from the part and then one very thin pass at the bottom which is going to cut the whole depth of the part but will only have a half a millimetre of material to remove. 
So I'll end up with a very clean part edge, but should also ensure that the part has a minimal chance of moving around as I cut it out. Now one other way that I've got in ArcCam of controlling how the part is held is to add tabs or bridges to the part. If we go and select the toolpath here, I can say that I want to add bridges a specific distance and length, so in this case let's add bridges of uh, one millimeter so we can see them easily and we'll go with a four millimeter length I want a constant number and I'm going to say create bridges these bridges are little tabs of material that are going to be left in here and I can move them around as you can see here and even change the size and the position of those to be anywhere that I want now in addition to that I can take and delete bridges if I've got too many like I don't need too many on the inside here and then I can make sure that I move them to places where it's going to be easy for me to clean them up when the actual cutout pass is done on this so look at those bridges in 3D if we zoom in we can see that the parts going to come along lift up and along and down and back in there if we actually make the bridges a bit thicker we can now see that even more pronounced another option we've got is to put 3D bridges in and now you can see these would work even faster and leave a triangular piece of material there on the top if we want to simulate that we should be able to see those and you can see those little tabs of material that are going to be holding the parts in place and then we'll just be able to go in and remove those manually afterwards so a very very powerful set of functions I've got in Insignia to control my cutout passes even down to being able to add extra pieces of material to hold them in place.